Hello and welcome to our webcast. I'm Sharon Ball with CD Networks. And uh, thank you for, for coming to our webcast, How Integrated CDN with Cloud Security Ensures Web Performance and Security. Just wanted to give you a couple, couple housekeeping notes. Um, we have provided several handouts um, that you can see there, links to white papers and brochures on our cloud security offering. So I uh, hope that you get a chance to look at those. And um, also, if you have any questions, we would love, them, love it if you would enter those into the questions section. We will try to get to them during the webcast. Um, but if we don't, we'll get back with you after the webcast to, to answer your questions as well. Um, so today we're, we're going to hear from um, 451 research analyst Jim Davis. And he's basically going to talk about how the integration of CDN with cloud security um, is basically reducing the complexity and management cost of, of your security solutions, as well as increasing the performance of your web applications and website. And then after that, we'll um, hear from John McElween of CD, CD Networks um, on our new product um, for cloud security that's fully integrated with our CDN. So let's get started. Let me introduce Jim Davis of 451 Research. Thank you, Sharon. This is Jim Davis here. Uh, I wanted to talk today about some of the security issues facing enterprises and how vendors are addressing needs to balance security with web application performance. Uh, the agenda, uh, my agenda briefly for today is to go over the state of DDoS, uh, both in terms of attacks and defenses. Uh, what are some of the inhibitors to adoption of cloud-based security? Uh, next, uh, I want to take a look at why there is a trend away from on-premise solutions. And then we'll look at some of the issues affecting both DDoS and WAF uh, security offering adoption. Uh, lastly, we'll take a look at whether there is a compromise that allows enterprises to have both better security and better performance. I'll give a little spoiler alert here. I think there is. So in terms of DDoS attacks today, uh, all verticals. Though financial services has historically been hit harder than others, companies in all verticals have been hit regularly by DOS attacks. Minutes, if not seconds, is the amount of time it takes for attacks to ramp up. That's an important consideration if your protection isn't always on and always in line. 45% is the average year-over-year -year increase for the last four years in the number of denial-of-service attacks that we know about. That's in addition to the size of attacks continually increasing in terms of bandwidth as well. 270 million packets per second is the size of some of the larger attacks that were reported last year. 394 sessions is all it takes to kill a web server using some of the more evasive layer 7 attacks. The point, volumetric attacks are getting bigger, but there are more and more attacks that require very little traffic and are able to evade defenses. The varieties of DDoS attacks, especially app level attacks, continue to multiply. Ten to $1,000, that's all it costs to hire DDoS services for a day. They're cheap and effective, making these types of attacks a popular choice for hackers. The problem is, traditionally, it's been expensive and complex to defend against these attacks. <clears throat> Layer 7, most reports that we've examined say nearly 100% of companies affected by DDoS attacks have been hit with application layer attacks. According to one report, as much as 80% of all DDoS attacks may use HTTP floods. Under 1 gigabit per second. Another report states that 80% of attacks are less than 1 gigabit per second in size and last only a few hours. Likely what attackers are doing are taking advantage of the fact that many companies are using traffic redirect based mitigation that is expensive and time consuming to put in place. By only attacking for a few hours and then stopping, the attacks are just long enough for many to redirect attack traffic, but short enough so that it isn't likely worth making the switch. Though the FBI warns of DOS attacks being used as distractions for intrusion attempts, statistically speaking, they do not generally result in data disclosure, but that doesn't mean there isn't an economic impact. So on this slide, what are the defenses Today, we're seeing tactics shift to include a combination of attack techniques, which has implications for security strategy. A solution needs to defend against four types of attacks. It needs to defend against volumetric attacks that fill the pipe. 
It needs to defend against attacks that leave sessions open, filling up session and connection tables. It needs to defend against computational attacks that are asking servers to do computationally intensive things. It needs to defend against vulnerability-based attacks that cause servers to crash or hang due to software bugs. Always plenty of those around. We also need to be aware that we need a secure DNS architecture and configuration of these services is crucial to a solid, solid anti-DDoS plan now. There are two architectures, roughly speaking, that are used for defense. On-premise, which has pros and cons, pros being pre-existing investment in hardware, often bundled with other network and application delivery products, it's always on and in line, but the cons are you can't handle larger sustained attacks, at least not today's attacks, even if you could afford to continually install new gear. The alternative, cloud, hosted, managed services, whatever you'd like to call it, DDoS protection as a service. The pros can handle larger sustained attacks that traditional equipment can't. Cons, traditionally, it's been more expensive, especially to have it in line all the time. That is starting to change, though. We're seeing a growing uh, offerings of hybrid cloud. Uh, we see nearly all major anti-DDoS uh, pro providers add hybrid and cloud offerings in the past few years, many through acquisitions. We're increasingly seeing uh, the two architectures, in other words, an integration on, of on-premise and cloud offered in tandem. Layer 7 attacks. Some can be addressed by existing infrastructure, in other words, uh, web, web application firewalls, next-gen firewalls, and ADCs, but these two have their limitations, and we'll get into that later in the presentation. Overall, what's needed is a multi-layered security. No single offering protects against everything. There needs to be a path for integration with other components via APIs as well. But ideally, I think this le leads us towards uh, a world where uh, more offerings are integrated together. There we go. The growing interest in cloud and hosted services. What's generating this? Well, there's a trend away from on-premise protection. Why is that? Performance, is there enough on-prem capacity? If not, you're looking at adding latency and an expensive time-consuming switchover for mitigation uh, for off-premises services. Complexity, with so many devices in line, how many hops does your traffic take after the edge router before it reaches your servers? There are a lot of devices to troubleshoot and maintain. The idea of many of these tasks getting taken care of before traffic hits the local data center is an attractive one to many end users. Scalability. The whole point of DDoS attacks is to understand what you can handle and then exceed it. The premise of handling any experienced attacker with what you have on-prem doesn't hold up, at least for the volumetric attacks. Application and attacks are a different matter. On switch. Has the slide uh, changed? Seems to be a little latency on. The <laughs> okay, there we go. I think I've uh, gone a couple of places. Ahead. No, that's all right. Sorry about that. Yes, uh, yeah, talking about latency. Uh, the trend away from on prem is performance. Uh, you know, we've interviewed lots of end users. Uh, one of the quotes that, that is exemplified here, the long and short of it, enterprises want performance, but it affects the security. Uh, so the security team comes back and says, well, you, you've created some new problems. Uh, the, the end idea, though, is that approaches that result in delays, slowdowns, uh, and require changes in user behavior or workflows are diminishing. We need to address this issue. See if I <laughs> can we go back to slide nine here. Let me see if I can get. Sorry, folks. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Where am I? Mean, now I've lost my place. Sorry. 
All right, let's go with this diagram here. I think we're okay. Complexity. Um, basically, what I wanted to show here is that uh, there's a lot of blue brick walls here, <laughs> and uh, you know the priority in defending against DDoS attacks is the ability to auto scale. Um, but we have some issues here when we have this many different devices to manage. Uh, there's comparatively long implementation times and update cycles. There's a shortage of on-staff expertise. Uh, there's also the time to manage and tune all of these devices. And we typically have different people managing each device. Uh, there's a big battle associated with putting additional hardware in line. Uh, you know, we're looking at IPS, ADC, firewalls, WAF, DDoS mitigation, breach mitigation, edge routers. Uh, it's a lot of things to, to deal with here, uh, and yet the on-premise hardware trend is less point solutions, uh, and we need these employees to be multitasking. Uh, you know, how do we make a case for uh, better performance and security? Our research, uh, in terms of looking at spending trends, uh, I, maybe it, it looks uh, contrary, converse to what we would expect. Traditional mitigation product growth has flattened out. Uh, given that the complexity and size of DDoS attacks is mostly headed up, there doesn't seem to be as much attention or budget flowing into DDoS and WAF as, as we would expect, yet anyways. Several factors may be playing into this, including the overall IT budget process in an organization is complex and the buying, buying audience is changing. Time and resources are being devoted to other matters, such as integrating existing premises-based security solutions. That's certainly a concern that's often come up in our research. And also, uh, customers are used to buying hardware for their data center. A lot of our research is showing trends in terms of traditional buying behaviors, uh, yet people are finding that the systems can't scale to handle the size of the current attacks. So this is what we're showing is not a big increase in budget. Uh, we think there's a, a solution to this, and that means putting DDoS and WAF into the cloud. <laughs> However, at the same time, other people have reasons not to use it. Uh, there's a fear of losing control. Uh, they might have a lack of experience using cloud, so they, they uh, don't want to adopt it just yet, a cloud-based security solution, that is. Uh, there's fears of uh, performance issues. There's budget concerns. Uh, maybe folks think that their current defenses are adequate. Uh, well, let's address some of these things. What do we mean when we say in the cloud? How is it different from cloud computing or hosted services? Well, all cloud is really hosted, but the most important difference between a static hosted approach and a cloud-based approach is auto-scaling in real time. It's multi-tenant uh, and it's on demand. Multi-tenant doesn't mean it's less secure. Uh, in terms of performance, latency varies based on the mitigation model. There's rerouting versus always on and always in line. We can address those concerns. In general, also, these concerns go away once users become more familiar with a cloud offering, as some of these uh, reports show. So how do we get these technologies and people together? How do we get the people to sing from the same songbook? How do we get cooperation and integration? Where do we put our focus? Well, there's an increasing occurrence of layer seven denial of service attacks, as we showed earlier. The vast majority of internet exposed services are web-based. The solution is integrated services, which means less effort to bring online and manage. There's also a case to be made for real-time intelligence sharing between the WAF and DDoS mitigation. Layer seven attacks are more common because they evade older DDoS products and require less resources and skill than volumetric attacks. There is a need to integrate because there's a need to correlate IP and other attacker info in order to prevent them from causing harm. On the other hand, WAFs have a reputation for being as false positive prone and difficult to manage as IDS and IPS. Uh, standalone WAF actually tops our surveys of shelfware. So there needs to be uh, in these integrated solutions a balance between WAF efficacy and management complexity. In short, customers are open to a simpler but better integrated WAF offering. The result we're seeing is more, de is more demand for security services delivered as a cloud or managed service, and the industry is responding. And the, and the slides are responding as well. 
So, can we end the can we have a compromise between security and performance? In a traditional architecture, the point here is that there are, again, many blue boxes managed independent of each other, and it's costing money to scale each of, of these elements and management too much. The present and future of network security is to trend from uh, zero in cloud to zero on premise. Will we ever get all the way to a completely hosted or cloud-based solution? Probably not, but one by one, traditionally on-premise functions are moving to cloud and managed services. We're moving towards having the ability to eliminate all compromises related to on-premise equipment using cloud-based auto-scale services. Even the firewall isn't safe from this trend. So, the cloud was made for this, in short. The economy, efficiency, and elasticity of cloud-delivered services allows for the removal of compromises usually inherent with most traditional on-premise network security products. What about performance? Well, in e-commerce, for example, a number of studies have shown that consumers generally expect the mobile site, for instance, to load as fast as a site on a desktop computer. Way back in 2011, consumers would wait five seconds before abandoning a mobile site. Now some reports put that figure between two to three seconds. The equation is simple. Faster page load times equate with more opportunities to show ads and sell stuff. So how to recoup the time spent making the network and application more secure? Is the old adage, performance, quality, or security, pick two, going away? We believe it can with the integration of CDN and cloud-based security. Technologies long deployed in CDAs, CDNs are one way to improve performance for applications delivered from the cloud. A CDN does this by using compute, storage, and network resources to place content such as files or other objects close to an end user for improved performance. For dynamic content, CDN services use IP and TCP level protocol optimizations to deliver objects to the user more quickly. Most CDNs now also offer content optimization as a component of their service, which affects page load times by reordering the delivery of content, resizing images, and compressing JavaScript and images. So the cloud-based approach has the potential to remove on-premise complexity, add security layers without adding latency, prioritize latency-sensitive applications, improve performance and security at the same time. The benefits, ROI, peace, an ROI peace offering to business in exchange for enhanced security, reduced on-premise complexity and latency at the perimeter. And that includes my part of the presentation. Thanks so much. Great. Thanks so much, Jim. And um, please enter any questions you may have for Jim. We'll do a Q&A um, in just a few minutes. Uh, first of all, we're going to have John McElwain um, tell you a little bit about CD Network's cloud security solution. All right. Great. I'm just going to do a quick overview of uh, CD Network's cloud security product offerings. We've got a uh, full suite of acceleration cloud and emerging market services. These include web acceleration, network acceleration, cloud, uh, DNS and load balancing, special regulatory access to the China and Russian markets. Uh, web acceleration is for internet-based websites and web applications, whereas network acceleration happens at a lower layer and is often found in custom application traffic and data center to data center communication. Cloud DNS is an authoritative DNS system, and cloud load balancing allows you to balance between CDNs uh, and or data centers. Though for this part, I'm going to focus in on cloud security, which includes both WAF and DDoS mitigation. CD Networks is both a global CDN as well as a managed cloud security provider in a single integrated solution. Our services are built with both a 24 by 7 security team as well as monitoring and automation. We found that the best solution comes from an integrated approach and just having monitoring or just having a security team isn't sufficient. You really need to have both. As a quick review, DDoS is distributed denial of service. It's when mul multiple compromised hosts are attacking a website or application to overwhelm it to cause slowdowns and outages. CD Network's mitigation happens at multiple layers, starting from the edge, moving to scrubbing pops, and then to protect the customer origin. 
We're going to drill down into specifics in the next few slides. WAF uh, stands for Web Application Firewall. Uh, as Jim had mentioned, a device or cloud-based service that evaluates web or HTTP-based conversations. Generally, WAF is able to look inside of the packets at the script logic and apply intelligence to determine threat level. Our WAF protection comes from multiple layers. At the outset, flood protection happens first. This is where attackers are trying to overwhelm a website with too much traffic. Then CD network specific rules are applied. Customers can also have their own rules and they're evaluated. Uh, next, the connection passes to the reputation firewall and a reputational risk is applied depending on or based on where the host came from. Next, uh, SQL injection and cross-site scripting type attacks are evaluated. This is where the WAF is drilling down into the content itself looking for violations. And finally, all of the end user or bot actions are evaluated in a behavioral manner to determine if the connection should be allowed to pass. Behavioral analysis is critical to keep up with rapidly changing internet attacks. And uh, all of our attack and traffic metrics are available on our uh, customer portal that you can see here. The portal is fully interactive. You can select on any points or range to drill into details. You're looking at the summary dashboard here, but there's pages on detailed threat analysis. There's host health and response times. Also in the portal is where the configuration capabilities are there. There's some predefined rule sets, for example, if you happen to be running on a popular CMS system like WordPress or Drupal, you can just simply turn on these rule packs to make it very simple for you. We also have an advanced rules creator that allows you to create your own custom rules. So it's a combination of uh, pre-built rules or uh, add your own. And next, we're going to jump into more details about what's specifically blocked at the DOS uh, and WAF layers themselves. On the DDoS side, everything from flood attacks to incorrectly formed network traffic are blocked. You've got standard whitelist and blacklist capabilities that you can use. There's a focus on layer 7 DDoS attacks, including floods, as well as slow and broad attacks. There are some commonly named attacks that also have special uh, targets, including Rudy, Hulk, Slow Loris, and others. Some of these have uh, great names, for example, Hulk. H-U-L-K stands for HTTP Unbearable Load King. And my favorite, Rudy, R-U-D-Y, stands for Are You Dead Yet? Uh, DDoS reflection attacks are where the attacker sends a legitimate query to a service, let's say like a DNS, and then the DNS sends far more traffic than the initial request. That way a small amount of attack traffic is amplified to a much bigger footprint uh, at the target. Attackers are very persistent and adapt based on what defensive measures are put in place. And on, uh, on WAF, we break down support into a, into a few categories. There's spam protection for web forms and the like. I mentioned uh, CMS platforms that have the rules you can turn on and off. Flood-based protection for uh, Layer 7 on the, on the WAF side. Tr the packet inspection capabilities for hacking attempts that cover uh, shell shot, cross-site scripting, SQL injection, that all happens uh, as, as a layer. Additional categories for WAF are a reputational analysis of host. Those are identified by various internet security teams as well as by CD Network's own threat center. There's also screen scraping capabilities if you'd like to turn that on. Uh, and then behavioral analysis kicks in to block probing, brute force password attacks, slow and broad attacks, the behavioral, what you might call a big data system, is integrated into all attack layers and provides what we call a, a self-learning and self-evolving system. And finally, as I mentioned, the uh, custom rule support where you can uh, generate your own using that uh, portable user interface. And kind of to wind down uh, my part of the webinar here, I'm just going to take 60 seconds to talk about CD Networks as a company. CD Networks has been around for 15 years and we've uh, expanded to over 160 POPs in 99 cities around the world. We specialize in hard to reach geographies as well as countries that have extra government regulations, for example, China and Russia. 
And here's a kind of a sample list of customers that just covers e-commerce, financial services, gaming, software as a service, uh, all of those various industries. And we're done. I guess uh, we could see if there's uh, any questions for either Jim uh, or myself. Thanks a lot, John. Um, yeah, we've got a few questions here. I'm going to start start with Jim. Um, if you could kind of maybe go over again or, or explain to people um, how, let's see, how long it would take to move off on premise and when, when should they be prepared to do this? Is this something that they should be thinking about this year or, um, you know, when, kind of when is the cloud security, you know, uh, security going to be ready, I guess, for the, for the general market? Well, I, there might be a couple of questions in there. Um, so when when should when should one do it? Well, uh, it, I guess uh, oftentimes uh, in, in in things security, uh, you do it when you have to. <laughs> uh, so that and that answer would vary a bit by industry. Uh, I think uh, in in ve uh, verticals such as uh, e-commerce, uh, um, probably gaming, of course, financial service as well. People should be doing it already if they haven't already. Uh, you know, again, uh, you have equipment already on premise to defend us against a certain uh, amount of attacks uh, in terms of volumetric attacks. Uh, when when do you move to the cloud? Well, whenever there's an attack that that exceeds that capacity. Uh, but the other issue, though, is that uh, you don't know what you're missing, uh, and that's not the good kind of thing. Uh, you probably should be examining these types of solutions now. Uh, how long does it take to to turn on? Well, it's certainly a lot quicker, uh, you know, than than integrating security equipment into your data center. Uh, generally speaking, it's going to depend on on the vendor and and the your own uh, process for a, for acquiring technologies. But the turn up uh, is generally going to be in a matter of days or weeks. Uh, so then you, you, you're you gaining uh, some insight, and, and this might be something to do as well, is uh, take some time uh, from the, the vendor to examine uh, in a trial period what kind of attack traffic are they seeing that you didn't see before. Uh, just have things in an inspection-only mode and, and then uh, you know, turn on mitigation layer w later when you see that uh, you know, there's, there's attacks that are coming in that you were missing and, and uh, you know, take it from there. Great, thank you. Um, just another uh, question around um, the benefits of the integrated solution, Jim. Um, you had touched on that, but um, could you just maybe summarize the benefits of integrating CDN with um, cloud security or WAF and DDoS protection? Okay, so there's uh, two components to that. One is just integration in general is something that's needed because, uh, and I'm talking about the security components here, because on-premise there's so many devices to manage already in terms of security uh, between DDoS and WAF and IPS and uh, the firewalls, et cetera, uh, that the cost and complexity of that is, is already unmanageable. Uh, there's a lot of technology that's just not getting used to its full potential already because of integration issues. So uh, the thing is, though, that you're trying to ensure security and performance of a web application uh, because it's generating revenue, for example. How are you going to do both those things at the same time? Security, especially when we're talking DDoS, if we're taking packets apart and looking at them, inspecting them to see if there's something bad, it's adding uh, some measure of latency. Uh, so adding in CDN, uh, means that you are helping balance that security and performance equation out. You're moving content closer to the edge. You're doing some web application logic uh, closer to where your customers are. You're putting it closer to them. You're also blocking attack traffic uh, far before it gets to your data center. So on both counts, you're helping the performance side with CDN and uh, having the integration of security uh, as a service in with the CDN, uh, again, uh, has, has a, another multiplying effect, uh, reducing the cost of uh, managing and, and scaling out those devices. We think, uh, you know, even though historically it's been a bit expensive to, to, to ask for DDoS-only protection, for instance, uh, you know, when you're looking at the costs uh, on an OPEX side, 
we're going to see trends uh, strongly moving towards these integrated cloud-based solutions. Great, thank you. Um, just one more question, because I don't want to keep people too, too much longer. And then if there's any questions, which there are, that we haven't gotten to, we are going to get back with you directly. Um, but somebody has asked, um, is the cloud security solution from CD Networks available now? Um, and maybe just a little bit more information on, um, I know there's been some very detailed questions. Um, does, it, does it integrate with other CDNs? Um, is it just a, a, a total integrated solution with CD Networks? And is it available now? Yeah, uh, great question. Yes, the uh, uh, product cloud security, including both WAF and DDoS, are available now. Um, as to integration uh, capabilities, we often see where customers will integrate with on-premise equipment. For example, maybe they just need uh, DDoS or maybe they just need WAF, and they can combine CDN with one or both of those. So if you think back to Jim's presentation where he showed the moving firewalls or the walls being moved from one side, the on-prem side, to the cloud side, some customers still keep one uh, one or more of those walls on uh, the on-premise side before they move to the cloud. So anyway, a long rambling answer. Uh, you can use one or both of the services with CDN um, uh, on-premise, but you can't really just switch out CDNs. I mean, uh, CDN itself includes that base capabilities. So you have to have CDN and then one or more of the other cloud security. Yeah, and just to summarize that, so CD Networks has um, actually integrated the WAF technology as well as DDoS mitigation and protection in, in our own network. So in our global network, we've integrated all of that technology onto the points of presence um, in our network. So so it's not you're not able to switch out CDNs per se, but. Um, so hopefully that answered that question. And um, we had set up that we would be a 30-minute webcast. So um, I want to go ahead and take all the other questions offline. Thank you so much for great questions. And really appreciate everybody's attendance today. And look forward to uh, hopefully getting in touch with you and uh, answering any more questions you have. Thank you, Jim Davis. And thank you, John McElwain, for presenting. Thank you.